Welcome to Beck's Bug Out Survivor. I think this is going to be my bug out bag. I've modified it, I've tailored it to suit my needs. But I've gone against convention as usual and chose something that I like. What if I told you I could dispense of the bag entirely and concentrate all the items from the inside into a bedroll, cowboy style? And I love doing that, I love doing it. Probably best not for a bug out, but certainly a few nights out. So what is a cowboy bedroll? If you imagine their insulation and all the bits and bobs they need rolled into a blanket then they'd tie it up and put it on the side of a horse and then you go out doing your ranching and then if you have to stay overnight put your blankets down and jump in it sounds simplistic and I like it but what about on a bigger scale like this scale shouldn't matter it can still be done so that's what I'm gonna do take out all the individual components put it into a cowboy bed roll and mine rather than have a horse I haven't got one is going on a shoulder sling and I know what you're thinking what about your food and your bits and pieces your clothes and everything and we'll get to that a little later so first you need a shelter and it's a shelter kit I use a lot for winter hence this here which is my single pelt sheepskin in your case that might be something like your inflatable air pad or your foam mat this is why i prefer the old arms bergen it allows me to carry kit both underneath and on top so this has application to use a rather big sleep system such as the mws or the uk modular system come to that I just want to get all the components out this is a very old bivy this is the one I use for testing I'm using the Bex bomb pod my own little creation it goes around the hammock here's the hammock in here on the front is an extra pocket I sewn on and for me it contains a basher and my shoulder sling for later and some bungees but I haven't brought out the tree straps with me so I'm going to construct everything on the ground and I'll show you a picture on the end of uh, the times I've used it up in a tree so first of all I'm going to thread the hammock into my sleeping bag I'm going to put the sheepskin inside the sleeping bag that's why I rate it for winter but we'll come back to another episode where I can provide equal amount of insulation as a sheepskin pelt um, but at a fraction of the weight and bulk not that that is weighty or bulky 800 grams and about the width of a tent I think it's a good trade-off so this hammock into a modified sleeping bag and my sleeping bag has been modified at the head and the foot with a zip by the hood and foot like I said and it has a built-in pillow like this and it's not just for comfort it's a big part of the Bex bomb pod hammock setup and it's terrific in the winter this so first job is the hammock actually going through the sleeping bag and then finally the foot end of the bag itself is here and this is the modified foot end with a draft pillow here you can see how it blocks that hole where the hammock comes through let's just reach in 
for the actual hammock and pull that through. And because I can't hang it in the tree for today, I'm just going to nip the zip up. But this is how it would be travelled. Next, inside the actual hammock, which is inside my bomb pod, is the actual sheepskin. Now that, in itself, a good three season setup. Hang it on two trees and climb in and zip it up at the front. A lot of people ask, can I get a diagonal lay? If you want a diagonal lay, get yourself under quilts. You've got to know what you're doing, going straight down the middle of a hammock, because people assume you like a banana and obviously then people haven't experimented enough by getting a good flat lay yet going straight down the middle of the ridge I do it all the time apart from summer where I want to be diagonal and get a breeze over me in winter I don't want that breeze over me I go straight down the line so out with the wool pelt and the wool pelt will come all the way up to the pillow that is built in and remember the pillow just isn't for comfort alone this pillow is a draft excluder so now this pelt needs to go into the hammock which is in turn inside the sleeping bag And the sheepskin provides the insulation. Not a lot of comfort, but I'm used to sleeping on the hard ground. I just don't like cold ground. Nice little view up here. But you don't really overheat with sheepskin, even in the summer. It does climatise very, very well. 800 grams, that's all it is for a single pelt. About as wide as um, a frame tent, not the modern trekking tents, which are tiny. To insulate it further, I need to protect the air around the sleeping bag because I'm suspended in midair on two trees. For that, I have a bivy bag and I put a hole in the bottom of it for the um, hammock to come through. And that's about it. Now, a hammock and an outer shell around it, such as an old bivy bag, is phenomenal. I wish I'd have done it on the Blue Moon camp I did a couple of years ago because I was freezing and yet the insulation I know is warm because the air around you, which is uh, the convection, will steal any heat you're making. So I want to trap the heat that I've got from escaping into the air like that. That's convection and that is cured by a bivy bag. This is a two quid bivy bag, by the way, off the car boot. So I do put holes in kit um, until I know the system works and then I buy a much better um, bivy bag and do the same. It's patched up to hell this. This is the hood, so an upside down bivy, and the hood will cover my face. Um, and I used to put it on a ridge line and hold it up like that, so I'm breathing into this hollow space here, and it warms the interior in there, an absolute treat. So this is a tried and tested system. So I need this DPM basher, folded out and put in line with this part of the setup here. DPM basher has been quartered by its length. I 
I am now at the foot end and I can bring this down to meet the end of the bivvy because as I roll up it tends to push um, your basher to the top. At this point I would also put in my suspension and maybe even a softy suit inside the sleeping bag. But I'm going to let you decide what you put in your sleeping bag. I've chosen a sheepskin. You might choose a softy suit or anything. Just a little bit of extra insulation so you can modulate it from season to season, that's all. These are the bungees that lash down the top. I'll need them for the roll. You're looking for a padded belt where you can attach a cord onto. This white cord needs to be the width of your actual bed roll. If yours hasn't got the clips like this, don't worry, you can play about and modify and modulate however you wish. sat on it to keep it in place to get two bungees which would otherwise hold down the basher the other two need to be in here but I'm going to put all four on is big like this because I have that sheepskin pelt and although not very heavy or very long it does obviously bulk out so yours isn't going to be as big as mine if you don't use a sheepskin and I have something that potentially could be as good as the sheepskin for a pod insulation for a hammock and I'm going to save it for a different episode because it does take a lot of explaining. So bear with me, you don't have to use the sheepskin. The shoulder pad here, we have the clip and the string runs through the middle. So I need to retrieve the string from this end here, which is should be inside here. Like that. And clip in to the shoulder strap. So I've dumped the weight of the pack and I have everything I need here. I could also put my clothing inside that sleeping bag that's work for me too. It's remarkably comfortable to carry because I don't know what that pack weighs because I modified it with probably around 3.25 kilos for the pack alone modified with all the pouches on and everything. Well this could be part of my hobo system where I'm not really taking it a distance. It's part of my kind of hide away so I can afford to put it on my shoulder and the most I'm going to be walking with this is a mile or two at most if I keep it a hobo set I'm only looking for a little patch like this to string it all up or throw it on the deck and get in it's a proper hobo set 
So hobo style sling like this with my clothing inside and you're thinking what about your canteen, your stove, your food and everything like that. Well that comes in form of a smock where I can put a hexi stove in my pocket there. I can have water bottle canteens on each side of the smock. If you don't like smocking your kit, you can actually use a webbing and keep it simple. Just one big pouch on the back for your cook setting food. One either side, a litre bottle there and a litre bottle there for water. Smocking it is another way as well where I can have things in my pockets. So what used to be inside a pack is now like this in a bedroll. I'm going to take the uh, sheepskin out of that and it'll go a lot slimmer. I'm going to put something else in instead which I'm in the middle of testing which you will see on a different episode. So that is going to start looking very different very quick. So cowboy bedroll, a possible saving there of well over three and a half kilos. Now I quite like that little bag there that I've modified. That is my wilderness survival bug out bag. And I don't really do bug out bags because I can bug out just in 30 litres. So I am going to call this my wilderness survival kit. What if you only like half the idea? You like it all put into a roll and you like the fact it's not in a bag but you don't like carrying it on your shoulder. I'm going to go back to base now and put all this onto a lightweight alloy frame. My lightweight alloy frame has molly shoulder pads and a molly hip belt. All I have to do now is mount bedroll to the frame. This one has the inverted shelf like this. And I think these are the Mark II Molly shoulder harness and hip belt. So I know it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea, each to their own, but this is fine. If you need the extra pockets, use the pack. If you don't need the extra pockets, you can put it on frame. Don't like the frame, you've got the shoulder sling.
So, thanks for joining me on that one. I know it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea making a cowboy bedroll. So, until next time, I will see you soon. Happy trails.